Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Monday's video. So then, I hope you had a great weekend. Weather was absolutely fabulous. Yesterday, sat in the garden most of the day, to be honest with you. Flopping in and out of the hot tub. It's all right for some, isn't it? Um, right, guys, what is going on here in the morning? So first job for me, the RS500 block. You can see I've got the cranking, guys, and all of the rods, minus one of the caps, and minus one of the caps at the back here. Now, first of all, the owner has had this block for quite some time. It come with the car, apparently, um, but there was a few bits missing, so he's had to go and buy quite a lot of bits from, you know, little farty bits, really, from Burton Power, etc. Um, I've had to supply the pistons, so we've got a standard Marler forged piston there that we're using. Um, had to mod the tops, etc. But I'll explain that in a minute. Um, but little things like on the centre cap, main cap, and the number five main cap, they've got dowels. You see dowels like this. Um, now, they were missing all of those. You've got long ones in the rear cap, and you've got shorter ones in the centre cap, missing all of them. I've, ha I've got three, one long one and two um, normal size one so we got those in but I've ordered I've ordered actually quite a few more from Burton unfortunately uh, they do them in the long so just waiting for that other one before I can get that cap on um, plastic aged it we have got 2.2 thou on all of the mains which is absolutely perfect guys and this crank turns lovely that is all talked up now so really really happy with that and as I say this is a standard standard crank so very rare indeed um, we all know what this, these cranks are fetching now, especially if they're usable in standard, which very rarely they are. So all the rods are balanced in size, guys. These rods were actually quite a bit out of balance. They were about a thou, thou and a half oval in places. So we've resized those entirely, and I'm just about to plastic age this one here. Um, I'm expecting to about 1.8 to 2 thou, something like that, I'm hoping, and that'll be wonderful and then we can get all those torqued up. I've had to, if I turn this over, you can see that I've got all the pistons in. So I've, first thing I've done is my valve pockets, and we go five mil deep on those. And then what I do is dummy fit them and see how much proud we are. Now, this block has obviously been used in the past. Um, I don't think it's a brand new block, but it's had some chomped off the top. So what has happened with this, um, I'm not sure what the history is, uh, but it's had a, a sort of fair bit took off the top. So I suspect maybe this block has been used once upon a time with um, wire rings in the top of it and someone's faced those out. So they take about uh, 25,000 to get those out of the block. Um, and I've had to end up chomping about a millimetre off the top of the pistons to get them to sit at the right heights of 12,000. So what I do, if I have to sort of start chomping that much out, we've lost a bit of compression because of the... Um, the cutouts but by the time I've took it off the, the top there what I tend to do is go out on this angle here um, the same amount so about uh, 40 thou outwards and then I take 30 or 40 thou out of the base there and that should we should end up then once I've done my worked out my compression um, we should end up back to about eight to one which would be nice uh, the head has apparently all been gone through in the past but we've got to strip that out and just check it um, hopefully the guides are all good, but we can just blast that head. It's never been blasted, so we want that looking like new. Um, but yeah, really, really happy with that now. So what I'm going to do is spin it back over, plastic gauge me main, and then hopefully is everything's all right, guys. So going off the previous two videos we did, um, we said that we're no longer be, or well, I am sort of no longer going to be doing the second channel like we were. I'm gonna hand that over to Isaac and he's gonna put everything he wants to put in the second channel. So that's great guys, still go over there and subscribe and like to that channel and keep your eye on what Isaac's up to. Um, and I'm sure I'm gonna be in it. But what I'm gonna do is just whenever we've got anything to mention about the E30, the kit car, something like that, we may just pop it into this channel guys when we've got time. Um, which leads me on to just one little purchase we've had for the e30 which i think it's quite important to mention um we have an update on the e30 guys as soon as tom has finished that i had a message off ryan who's going to be painting it saying he's just finishing his brother's honda civic type r should be done this week how's the bmw looking which means 
hopefully, fingers crossed, by the end of this week, providing Tom's done all his bit, it should be ready for paint. So that's really exciting. Now, this little purchase here, guys, um, I'm sure I've told you the story about this before, and it would certainly be in this, the second channel anyway, in the older videos. Um, but we are converting now to five stud from four stud, which the original E30s, uh, E30 M3s were. We've gone for uh, the E36 hubs, etc. Um, but it was too much hassle really with the suspension that we had. The suspension was old, the rear sh shocks were a bit knackered anyway. So we've been in touch under recommendation from Wayne Greatrix and others to go for BC. So I got in touch with BC Direct. They were really, really helpful. They can do a 36 strut with an E30 top mount um, with the, the spec of springs we want, basically custom built guys, and they're not very expensive. And this is what they've sent us. So looking absolutely beautiful. We've, got, we've gone for the true coil over on the rear as opposed to separate spring. Um, you can see there we've got, these are not, I've been advised by them not to go too complicated. So these are the two-way integrated um, rebound and compression adjustable, about 35 clicks of, of, a, of um, adjustability there in the top. So nice and easy. You can see that looks absolutely lovely. We've got um, corner weight adjustment on them as well. Um, and if we get the one of the one of the front ones out you can see it's got the beautiful um beautiful adjustable camber top mounts on there again with the rebound and compression adjustability so yeah lovely items there from bc and as i say a lot of people have recommended bc and said you know they're really really good so it's there's no point in going to the extent of over complicating things and spending probably three or four thousand quid that you don't really need I think they're going to do the job. Um, there's a lot of people that run trick track cars actually that run these. So yeah, really, really happy with that guys. So we've had another pallet turn up. Uh, the box on the top there, I'm pretty sure is the plated bits for this engine over here. So that's all we're waiting for now on that engine. So I'll unbox that in a moment. And down on this pallet guys, I think as promised, which I think should have arrived on Friday, but obviously we're happy it's here now. This is another Cosworth engine that needs to be done in bits more than likely, but we'll unveil that in a minute. But that's um, good news, another Cosy on the way. Now, Isaac is over here with the A-Series. We'll have a chat with him in a minute. He's just on his break, um, but he's just put the, you can see he's got the crank in now, doing a really good job, bless him. Uh, looks lovely in the nice, fresh, bright red. Crank looks mint. Um, I think he's put the thrust washers in and there's no end float whatsoever. So he's had me grind these on the surface grinder. Um, I've ground the backs because the thickness of the material is not very thick at all, but the backing steel plate is obviously very thick. So I've took some off there. He's doing a trial, a trial fit and we'll see in a minute how he's got on with that. So guys, we've got all the crank talked up and that now, um, but we might have to undo these big ends. Well, in fact, we are definitely going to have to undo undo the big ends and I'll tell you why because I'm just fitting the oil spray jets down the bottom there you can see these are the ones that I've machined in so these are a BMW oil jet what exactly they are out of I do not know I know it's just it's a BMW but what the part number marries up to don't know um, but this is a perfect example of why we charge the extra hours in dummy building um, these engines and what goes into it got a perfect example here and also over on the A series, what Isaac is doing. Um, so you can see, he's got no cranking at the moment, the cam's in, he's got a DTI on the end of it. So um, at the moment you are... Just mucking around with these thrusts, because uh, when I put their new thrust standard, right? when I put them in, had no clearance at all. Okay. Very tight to go in, so... Um, so I've put them on the surface, surface grinder, grinder. And the first thing I did is if you have a look down the down there, look, you can see the steel back in the thickness of that, but there's not much material on the um, on the, the mating face side. So first thing I've done is put them in the surface grinder and ground the back. Yeah. Um, and they were quite untrue, weren't they? Yeah, a bit uneven. So a bit um, uneven. So he's put them in. There's no, there's no no end float to start no, with. No, none. None at all. I've ground the back, we've got about a thou, thou and a half. Yeah, so then from there I've got a, 
a fine grit and a not so fine grit uh, bit of sandpaper on the surface plate. Yeah. And in a figure of eight sort of sanded them back. Yeah. So I think they started at 92 foul. And now they're at about 90, 89, so. Okay. Um, so pop them in there and see what we've got, innit? Have a little look. But yeah, this is, as I say, these, this is just one thing that goes into the actual dummy building. I mean, most people would, if, if at all, measure the, um, the distance with a vernier of the thrust faces on the crankshaft. And if they're standard, they'll probably order standard bearings. Now, don't get me wrong, you put those, those thrusts in and it will turn, um, but they add absolutely no end float, which is gonna no. cause premature wear on the thrust faces. So we've got 0.06 of a mil, which is about 2.1 thou or something. So yeah, so we want to aim for about 4 thou. Yeah. Something like that. So I need to go a bit further on them. Yeah. So I shall do that. And uh, then we can start getting it all together. Yeah, so... I plaster gauge the mains as well. We've got, it's a two inch journal. We've got about 2.1 thou. So That's good. Yeah, ideal. So ideal. That's perfect. So yeah, that's, um, as I say, all these little things, guys, goes into the dummy build and just takes time, doesn't it? You know, you can easily lose a couple of hours yeah, fiddling no, around easily, with these thrusts. Yeah. Whereas most people, if you're building at home, would probably throw them in and assume it's going to be all right, but got to be It's a bit weird, right. really, because they normally are all right, but... They normally are, but... I don't, I'm, I don't know how we've standard everything. The trouble is with these, a lot up. of the time, these aftermarket thrusts and bearings and what have you you know you, you can't go on assumption most of them are good no. quality and you might yeah. get 10 sets that are absolutely perfect but these were evident by putting them on the surface grinder that the backs of them were not really even not true to, the, to no the so um so the cosy um as i said put the i put the oil jets in we've plas uh, we plastic gauged all the mains and the big ends we've got um we've got two thou on the big ends yeah absolutely fine uh, 2.2 on the mains, so that is perfect. Oh, I, um, I put these oil jets in. Now, what I do is put them all, put the, them in with a banjo with a little bit of thread lock on. Yeah. Um, and I've got to get them in line. So what I'm aiming to get them in line with, if you have a look down there, there is a notch in the standard Marler piston. Oh yeah. Okay. Now I know these spray jets are not meant to be in here. Um, but that notch there, I'm not even at TDC, um, or well, bottom dead centre, and it's going to foul on that spray yeah, jet. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? So yeah. although I've got them all in line now, um, they're going to miss the, the web here, and they're also going to miss the comrod, so they're in the right position. I've talked them all up, but I'm going to have to take all these pistons out and just basically open that notch up, probably another two mil. To give it extra clearance, oh, right. you can't run it too close because you, you can't. You normally have to do that then on these, do you? Yes, yeah, sometimes you do, and sometimes you don't. It's a bit uh, weird right. on these cosies because the base of the block, believe it or not, it's not all the castings are, are the same. So you find that sometimes you'll put these in, and there'll be enough clearance. Right. But other times it will turn over, but they just about touch. But you want, I always run them with about two mil of extra clearance just to allow for any rock yeah. on the pistons, etc. So. So now I've got to take all the pistons out, um, I'll notch them by hand, just open that up yeah, and put them in and, and that'll be that, mate. But it's all extra time, isn't it? Yeah, it's all things that you have to do, so. Yeah, so yeah, I'll get those out now, get them notched. And hopefully by the end of the day, mate, I can have this job done and you'll have yours done. Yeah. So, got the studs in the top of the block, all the pistons are back in. Yeah. So that is the, the top of this block complete and as you can see mate down here if you have a look down in these two where we've got bottom dead center yeah see now we've got a you couple of mil of clearance on those cutouts ideal and um, same on the other two we've turned it over so that a few times those, so those little cutouts you do with the, with the dremel so i just did it with the dremel yeah just gone down another couple of mil um and we're going to be fitting this oil pump and pipe so this pipe here obviously has got the built-in 
um, oil jets, which we're going to do away with. Yeah. We've got a new pump. Um, so rather than dismantle this pickup pipe and take all this off, because these are quite valuable now, yeah. all we're going to do is we're going to, inside the pump, block off the oil jet feed. Right, okay. Okay, and then we'll just keep it intact like this. Trying to get a blank pipe or another two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive pipe now is very expensive. Some of them are like 250 quid. So as soon as we've got it there, that's all we do. Just blank that off and leave it intact. Um, over here, mate, so this RS500 spec Cosworth here, we've had all the bits now back from plating. Yeah. And you can see I've laid it all out there. So in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to build up the throttle body housing um, by putting all the bits back in. Now I sort of recon that. Yeah. Because we have to dismantle that with all the arm and everything and the butterfly. Right. Um, so oh, yeah. I'll do a quick bit of putting that all back together. Looks lovely, this stuff. Yeah, it's all good, really. So it's considering it's original, it's nice to just have it plated and then it's not going to corrode for many years, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it, mate. You've, next video, we'll have more from you on the A-Series. Yeah. See how you've been getting on there. I'm sure many people are interested. Um, so you've got your, you got your M-Float in the end. Yeah, got my M-Float all, all correct. So got about, I think, just under four and a half thou of M-Float. Yeah. And now I'm just getting the last piston in. Piston jut out all all right? I think so. It, they seem... Flush. Maybe just, yeah. Slightly oh, just under, I think, but we'll measure it. Yeah. Lovely job. Yeah. Well, that's it then, mate. Yeah. Until next video. Have a good evening. We'll see you then.